Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ in Freebie Friday. Now if you're new to our YouTube channel, these videos are all about answering your health related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, health in general, something regarding diet, nutrition, herbs, supplements, or really anything related to health and wellness, and you would like our help in answering your questions, all you have to do is leave those questions in the comment section below, and we'll be answering those based on popularity, the questions that we feel will be most beneficial to the group as a whole, and of course the questions that we are capable of answering. Now something else really great about these videos is that every week from that comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms. So even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're interested in winning some free herbs, all you have to do to be entered to win is simply subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, give this video a thumbs up, and then just drop any comment in the comment section below. And with all that being said, let's get to this week's questions. All right, so taking a look at our first question, this question reads, I'm thinking of getting into coffee based on your videos, but worried about teeth staining. Are there any concerns about this and how would you mitigate this? All right, so that's a really good question and a common question, and there's actually a very simple answer to this question. So I'll discuss that, and I will get into some tips for mitigating the potential staining effects of consuming coffee regularly. So the first thing to understand is that the reason that coffee and tea have been said to cause teeth staining isn't because of the coffee or the tea in of itself, but polyphenol compounds, chemical compounds in the coffee and tea that's also present in other plant substances known as tannins. And these tannins contribute to the discoloration of the teeth by sticking to the plaque in the mouth. And tannins do have a certain dark appearance to them. They're what are responsible for giving things like coffee, pomegranates, teas, berries, their vibrant color. So in this way, it's really not the coffee consumption or the tea consumption of itself that contributes to it. And it's not really about the color of the beverage. You would think that coffee would stain your teeth more because it's darker, but actually it's been found that teas, which are a lot brighter, even a green tea or white tea, can contribute to staining even more because they have a higher tannin content, but for other reasons as well. So remember, you're not gonna really see any discoloration of the teeth if your teeth are healthy and free of plaque. So this is not just a matter of brushing your teeth and keeping the teeth free of plaque, but plaque tends to accumulate on the teeth when there's a vitamin K2 deficiency, if there's a calcium deficiency, or some other issue that's contributing to deranged calcium function in your body. So if your teeth are not properly uptaking calcium, if the calcium is not being deposited into the heart tissues appropriately, and there's an inverse of calcification occurring in the body, this can contribute to the development of plaque. So if you're somebody that gets a lot of teeth plaque on the body, this could be largely due to a vitamin K2 deficiency because vitamin K2 plays a major role in calcium metabolism, ensuring that calcium is brought into the hard tissue and not deposited into the soft tissue, like around the gum lining, in the skin tissue, or in the circulatory system in the artery wall or other places in the body. So one thing to consider in mitigating the potential staining effects of coffee or caffeine is to reduce the plaque buildup on your teeth. If you're not building up that much plaque on the teeth, the tannins don't have anything to stick to to stain the teeth. I've been consuming coffee for a couple of years now, six or seven years, and I've not noticed any changes in the color of my teeth. I've never noticed any yellowing or discoloration. I often get compliments on how white or bright my teeth are, and I consume a pretty decent amount of coffee every day for the last six or seven years. But one thing I've noticed is that in the last six or seven years, through dietary changes, through a very conscious consumption of vitamin K2 rich foods. I also supplement with a high quality vitamin K2, as well as adhere to other things that would not derange the functioning of calcium in the body, that I get little to no plaque buildup on my teeth. So that could be part of the reason I notice no discoloration or staining. So one thing I'd highly recommend is getting a handle on the overproduction of plaque on the teeth. If your body is truly healthy, your teeth shouldn't be producing that much plaque. I think that's a sign that something's off and that particularly the calcium in the body is not being absorbed 
absorbed into the cell and put into the hard tissues of the body and is being deposited elsewhere, usually in the soft tissue. And one super important thing to do, again, is to make sure you're getting enough vitamin K2. Without vitamin K2 and also vitamin D, magnesium, and other important minerals, then the calcium is going to be sent to the wrong places in the body. And as I've talked about in videos in the past, both the parathyroid hormone and prolactin can be contributing factors to malabsorption of calcium and deranged calcium metabolism that contributes to tooth decay and osteoporosis and soft tissue calcification. So there's no simple quick fix, you know, the body is systemic. But if you are concerned about teeth staining, the thing you're gonna wanna get under control is the overall health of the teeth and making sure that you don't have much plaque buildup. You could obviously go on a more anecdotal route and just make sure that, you know, before or after you drink coffee that you just brush your teeth and make sure there's no plaque buildup on it so the tannins don't stick to it. But the thing you're gonna wanna ultimately do is correct any sort of calcium issues in the body, which are, again, usually related to hyperprolactinemia, hyperparathyroidism, or hypothyroidism. Those are usually what are driving the calcium issues. And sometimes it's just as simple, again, as a vitamin K2 deficiency or a calcium deficiency. And as I mentioned, in my personal experience, the dietary supplementation and direct supplementation of K2, along with lifestyle changes like always getting enough sunlight, not consuming any sort of grains or legumes and other starchy carbohydrates that I notice tend to mess with the gut a little bit and contribute to the formation of plaque in the mouth that I don't really have any plaque buildup in my mouth at all. I could even not brush my teeth for a couple of days. I tend to just uh, water floss or water pick floss my teeth and I'll oil pull and do like a mouthwash with sea salt and water. But honestly, I think even brushing the teeth too much can wear down the enamel. And behind the white enamel is a compound known as dentin, which is actually yellowish and brown. So part of the discoloration could be contributed to the wasting of the enamel. So that's a more severe stage of tooth decay where the tooth is just eroding a bit faster than normal, which again could be related to these other issues, the high prolactin and parathyroid and deranged calcium metabolism. So your teeth are losing the calcium and the bones are losing the calcium and it's being placed elsewhere in the body. So I think the best route is to overall make sure that your body's working efficiently, make sure that the calcium is being placed in the right parts of the body into the teeth and that there's no plaque buildup and you should avoid any sort of staining altogether. So this is a very long-winded and precise way of saying that if you're healthy, I think overall you shouldn't notice any staining issues, but you can combine both of these things, you know, work on the overall health Make sure you're getting in the vitamin K2, the other important fat-soluble vitamins for proper calcium metabolism and teeth health or dental health. And then on the short term, you know, practice some simple uh, oral hygiene or dental hygiene in regards to removing plaque. You know, if you do have plaque, you might want to do some light brushing, but you don't want to brush too hard or too vigorously because you could wear down the enamel and that's just going to lead to worsened issues like the exposure of dentin, which would have your teeth overall look less white and less bright. All right, so taking a look at a second question, this question reads, do certain bacterial infections like H. pylori also inhibit the reproduction of hydrochloric acid? All right, so it is true that a bacterial infection like H. pylori can be a contributing factor to low stomach acid production. Basically, the pathogenic bacteria known as H. pylori can deteriorate the stomach lining by producing a metabolite enzyme known as urease, which actually destroys or eats away at the stomach lining. And in an adaptive way to protect the body's bloodstream from becoming toxic or from further burning up the stomach, what the body will do is respond to this by decreasing the production of hydrochloric acid. So the thing that you want to do ultimately is correct the infection so that way the bacteria are not eating away at the stomach lining. However, some people will try to take NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to correct the inflammation associated with H. pylori and this just further contributes to the issue by inhibiting the production of mucus in the stomach. So one thing you don't want to do is take NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, things like Tylenol and things like Advil, which would just further decrease the body's protective production of mucus, which would contribute to the further uh, wasting of the stomach lining and the damage under the stomach lining. What you're gonna wanna do is correct the H. pylori infection. So you wanna take a two-pronged approach. You're gonna wanna take some measures to actually kill off the bacteria in of itself, which you can do through the use of natural antibacterials like coconut oil, which is rich in caprylic acid, which can kill off H. pylori, or things like mastic gum. 
But the other thing you're going to want to consider is what caused the H. pylori infection in the first place. Because if you keep just trying to kill the bug, but you didn't correct what caused it, they'll just keep coming back. So the way that I've heard it described in a metaphor and I explain to people sometimes is consider your body as a house and your house or body in this case is infested with bugs. It's infested with, let's say, ants. If you just kill off the ants, if you just bomb the house, but you don't get rid of the food source, they're bound to come back. So in the same way, you don't want to just kill off the infection, you will experience relief. But the fact of the matter is, if your body is experiencing a bacterial infection, then your immune system is weak. So in regards to H. pylori, there are a couple of things that tend to affect this. It could just be poor digestion in of itself. So poor dietary habits and lifestyle habits that are contributing to the insufficient or incomplete breaking down of the food you eat, which causes the bacteria to over proliferate and try to eat up the undigested food and that could contribute to it in a systemic way. But there's also research that shows that things like hypothyroidism, which contributes to the down regulation of not just the metabolism, but the digestive system could contribute to H. pylori infections or just overall weakened immune defenses. So that way your body is less capable of fighting off pathogens. But also there are very simple factors that have been discovered like a vitamin D deficiency has been found to be a contributing factor or a risk factor for developing or for contracting H. pylori. And this is probably simply due to the fact that vitamin D is an important hormone like vitamin that is essential for proper thyroid function and proper immune function. So really anything that's bogging down the immune system and metabolism is going to cause an increased susceptibility to any sort of infection. So to answer your question, yes, it could be a contributing factor to low stomach acid, but it's probably not the initial one. In fact, it was probably an initial stress that slowed down the whole metabolism and digestive system, including the secretion of hydrochloric acid, which made your body more susceptible to the infection in the first place. So you're gonna wanna correct both of these things. You're gonna wanna take measures to kill off the bacteria, but I also find that as long as you're giving your body what it needs, if you're reducing the stress that is ultimately impairing its natural immune defenses, that once the body is back into good shape, the immune system is just going to fight it off for you. And that's really the smartest route to take. So this is again why I always say that the cure is in the cause and more important than trying to figure out things to do, take a look at the things you're doing that you should stop doing that are destroying your health. So in this case, there could be a magnitude of stressors that is ultimately weakening the metabolism, digestive system, and immune system that cause the infection that you're gonna to wanna to take a look at. If you give your body a break, if you reduce the stress, the immune system will have a chance to work properly and handle the infection on its own. And at the end of the day, it's not you, a food or a supplement that heals your body, it's your body that heals the body. The best thing that you can do is just find out from your body what you're doing or not doing to contribute to either health or illness. And in this case, it's usually stress and poor digestive habits that are weakening the digestive system and immune system. So I'm gonna highly recommend that you check out the Perfect Digestion course for getting a complete guide on how to correct all the possible imbalances that have ultimately weakened both the digestive and immune systems so that way your body can just heal itself. But yes, H. pylori can inhibit the secretion of hydrochloric acid by producing an enzyme that wastes away the stomach lining and in order to protect the bloodstream from becoming toxic or from the stomach from being further burned, the body responds by downregulating the production of hydrochloric acid which is helpful on one hand, but over the long term, it's gonna to lead to further and worse in digestive system issues and other health issues. All right, guys, that brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. Hey right, guys, that brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. If you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, remember all you have to do is simply subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, give this video a thumbs up, and then just drop a comment or question in the comment section below. Also, if you're learning more beyond this YouTube channel, be sure to check the description box for links to our online wellness academy, tonic herb shop, and blog.